Oh yeah, that. <laughs> Hi there. Thank you for coming today for another episode in the inter series of interviews for dog owners to help them discover the secrets of dog experts and transform your life to create the best friend you've always wanted. Today, I have Jane Wolf here. Um, thank you so much. Jane is a dog professional dog trainer with plenty of certification <laughs> um, and expertise in separation anxiety. And she has the Good Wolf Training Company. I love the name of that. Thank and you. she also has um, lots of experience and with working with cooperative care. And that is the topic we was kind of hoping to cover some of today because, because it's so very important when people need to handle their dogs and for any reason, and it's not letting you, it's not good. So I'd love you to, to jump in and tell a little bit more about, um, yeah, cooperative care and about yourself. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. And this is uh, definitely something I really love to talk about. Um, yeah, I do primarily work with separation anxiety, but when I'm not doing that, I working on cooperative care and husbandry in general is really one of my favorite things to work on outside of separation anxiety. Um, and part of that is because of my experience with my own dog um, and the way that they've really struggled with basic needs. So cooperative care you know, I would really define as, well, the kind of, um, you know, the, the, the husbandry part of it really is we have to be able to physically care for our dogs. You know, they have to go to the vet. They have to be able to be groomed. It's great if you can give them a bath sometimes, you know, <laughs> those kinds of things. And then the cooperative care piece of that really is just, are they enjoying it? Are they being an active participant? Are they comfortable? Um, you know, and that's really what I like to try to work on um, with my clients and with my own dogs too. Um, and like I said, part of the reason I even got into any of this is my own dog, Nina, who I'm probably going to talk about a lot, but um, my dog, Nina, she's, um, I actually don't remember how old she is right now. She's a rescue dog. She's probably about 10. And um, she's really kind of what pushed me into wanting to be a dog trainer to begin with. Because uh, when I got her, not only did she have terrible separation anxiety, I couldn't do anything to her. Um, she liked being pet. She's a pretty affectionate dog, but little things like trying to change her collar or get a tick off of her. I live in Michigan and the ticks are really bad. And, um, you know, those kinds of things often would result in her growling at me or snapping at me. And I mean, forget trying to take her to the vet or give her a bath or clip her toenails. And it was really quite overwhelming. Um, I think part of what really interests, you know, why I like working on this so much with clients too, is it is just so stressful when you know, like, oh God, if it's raining today. And if I walk my dog, I'm not going to be able to brush them. I'm not going to be able to give them a bath when we come inside. And I'm going to have to live with this really muddy dog or God forbid there's a medical emergency, oh, it's just gonna be this huge ordeal. Um, and unfortunately with Nina, I did have a medical emergency. Uh, Nina has Addison's disease, uh, which it, when treated, totally fine. She's doing great, um, thankfully, but it does require routine blood work and monthly injections that we do at home. And that was, you know, every time we got close to the end of the month, I'd be like, oh God. Oh, what's yeah, I don't happen? know if I'd want to go near a dog that didn't want me to be doing the needle like that. I actually have no. done that. And it's not a nice experience. No, the not dog at doesn't, all. really doesn't want it. And doesn't want to be near. No, and, right. And I also was like, oh my gosh, if she doesn't get this, she's not going to live. Like I, I have to do this. And, and, um, you know, so it was a lot of kind of a lot of pressure on me too, which I, you know, was overwhelming and, and things. So, um, you know, it really got me more interested into figuring out like how, how can I make sure that she is actually comfortable? Thankfully she is, you know, nowadays, um, the amount of things that I can do with her now is just incredible. She, she lets me put pajamas on her in the winter, which is so cute. Um, the chow chow in her does not keep her warm in Michigan winter. So she needs jammies. Uh, I can clip her toenails. She can get a bath. She gets so excited every month now when we do her injection. She got, uh, you know, um, we found a great veterinarian and um, she really likes him now. And which just that alone was a big deal. <laughs> I was just um, gonna say that can make a big difference is getting, getting, in getting the veterinarian and the staff to, 
be yes. on that same level and and understanding that it's hard for them too. Yeah, totally. And thankfully, where we're located, we were able to find a fear-free certified vet. So he is amazing and really helpful in the whole process because he knows when to back off. He knows how to make friends with Mina, all of that. So, uh, you know, she gets blood draws now. You know, all of these things are just so, it, it's such a relief now for me. And, and so my goal always with clients too is to try to, I mean, I, I want the same for them you know, desperately. And I want to try to make it a fun and easy process too. I don't want it to be, um, you know, like something they dread doing or something they want to procrastinate because it's, you know, sometimes tedious and not that fun. Um, but so my goal always is to try to make it as fun as possible for them too. So. Yeah. And, and I'm always right away thinking people should start right away with their dog, right? Like they, cause it takes time. That didn't happen overnight no. with your dog being that good. It's, it's no, no, definitely not. No, but you're right. It does take time. And I think it, um, one thing I really try to emphasize with people too is like prioritize, you know, you don't have to try to do it all at once and you're not going to be able to, you know, so for, for Nina, for instance, you know, originally I was like, Ooh, toenails, that's a big priority. Like, I don't want her to scratch me. I can hear her toenails on my hardwood floor. And I'm like, Ooh, it's real cringy. Um, <laughs> well, when she got sick, I was like, never mind. I don't care about her toenails. Um, and, you know, I'm going to implement some management so they don't get out of control. My main priority right now is her being able to get her monthly injection and be able to get her month, you know, her routine blood work done. Um, yeah. So I, I think making that priority is, you know, prioritizing your goals, I think is really helpful and kind of take some of the pressure off too, you know. Well, um, and when you break it down into easier, like you mentioned before, it's not as hard um yeah as you think to do these things yes just... <laughs> totally and you know I think one thing I um so I'm a graduate from the academy for dog trainers and um Jean Donaldson is my mentor she's amazing and um one thing she really instilled in us too is training with a plan and and that for me was huge so you know for all of Nina's husbandry work and everything I do with my clients I have a step-by-step -step plan starting with something really easy that I know this dog can achieve and kind of working up to the end goal. And even just being able to like check things off a box, you know, uh, check a box off is just like, oh, I did it, yay. You know, it, but I think it also really helps people to not feel so overwhelmed because you do have sort of a roadmap to get to your end goal as opposed to just this nebulous, like, well, how, how on earth am I gonna make my dog like her nails being trimmed? I, I don't know how to do that at all. It's like, well, can you touch your feet? You know, is she afraid of the nail clippers? Like, let's just break it down um, and, and start there. And it works. And it works. Yeah, it, it totally works. works. That's exactly yeah. how I did it with them. Because what happened is that I have one, my oldest dog used to always chew her nails. She would do it. So I didn't do, I never had to do her nails. It was like, oh, this is convenient. So I didn't really, I know we always touch the dogs, but anyways, very different story when you came near her with claws, with, with yeah. the clippers. And yeah. um it didn't take that long, you know, because at first she, she was, she was fighting for her life. You, you know, she's not afraid to, you know, little dog's attitude, chihuahua or palm <laughs> chihuahua. And um, now she's much better. She sometimes still makes faces, but she will let me do it. Uh, yeah. It's, it's very, it's just takes time. And with the treat, you know, as long as there's a little bit of a paycheck for that patience and oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. get them Nina working definitely. with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, I think that's, Absolutely true. And, you know, in terms of working with you too, one thing I think a lot about with cooperative care is what are some fun things that I could train my dog to do to make this easier on me? You know, so um, for instance, Nina knows um, how to lay on her side on cue. And so um, I sort of like a play dead is how it started. So we could be like, bang, and she'd lay out flat. And it was very cute. But I was like, you know, actually, that's very useful because her feet are right there. And so now I can kind of incorporate that into uh, nail trims or, you know, for, you know, um, teaching dogs to jump up onto things really helped me get my dogs into the bathtub. You know, I have a, you know, almost 70 pound pit bull. He's not that easy to get into the bathtub sometimes, but he can do it on his own, thankfully. And, uh, you know, so those kinds of things can make it easy. I, I think too, it's nice because for Nina, it allows me to know too, you know, are, are you still into this? Um, you know, so if, if she, is on her side and I'm doing her toenails and she decides to get up, I just stop. And I'm like, all right, you, you've decided this is over. Um, 
And I, I think that's been really helpful for me to know, like, is she still into this, like I said, but it's also really allowed her, I think, to kind of trust the process a little bit, or she knows that I'm not going to take it too far. She knows that if she's over it, she can just ask me to stop and I will. And um, the trust and respect. Of, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, you know, I think some of that trust too has been just helpful, like, um, at, you know, there was the list of things that Nina was not okay with was so enormous, you know, that at a certain point I was like, oh my God, am I really going to train her all of these things? But I really found that as I started to whittle that with that list down, the next thing got easier and the next thing got easier and the next thing got easier. Cause it was like, she trusts the process. She knows what to expect. She knows I'm not going to overdo it. She knows that, you know, um, I'm going to try to keep it really fun. She knows she's going to get cheese and sausage the whole time. You know, she's just like, this is great. Um, and I found that nowadays too, little things that I actually never even trained, she's okay with because she's like, oh, oh, I, oh, it's just like the other thing that you already do. You know, like to be honest, ticks. I mean, I hate yeah. the ticks so much, but they're here, you know, and uh, I never really did any training around that, but I can now ask her to, to stay and I can pick a tick off of her. And she's like, oh, all right, it's just like when you clip my toenails. This isn't that bad. Um, it's pretty so, yeah. pretty amazing. And, and I do think it has, it's huge with the trust. The trust is, you, you know, and, and letting, walk, you know, maintaining that trust, like you said, when the dog, if the dog is really, you know, gets up and wants to walk away and needs that break or to try just to mm -hmm. be, uh, to be open to that and to try later or try a different way and staying mm -hmm. patient. And, and it is amazing how fast it can go, how they can, you know, you just a little a day you really can like in a few days and they know they're getting something for whatever the weird thing is that you're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and really some of that stuff too, like conditioning her to like the nail Dremel, you know, um, I maybe did like two trials a day where I would just turn it on, run to the fridge, get her a handful of lunch meat, give it to her turn off the Dremel and I was done. And I was like, oh, well, over the course of, you know, maybe three days, I would turn on that nail Dremel and she was like, drop everything, run to mom. You know, like she was just so excited to hear it because she knew what it meant. So, you know, oftentimes this stuff really is as simple as like, just show them nail clippers like four, three times a day at most and give them something really, really cool along with that. Um, and that, that can be, you know, all you really have to do to start making a lot of progress on this stuff, so. And then yeah. it just grows and it gets, and it actually gets yeah. easier once yeah. you get that trust. Definitely. Little things, touching the feet with the nails, uh, with the yeah. flippers, I mean, just touching it. Yeah. yeah. That is, you know, working yeah. also from puppies, right? Like right from the beginning, right away, touching and gently yes. feeling everything. Yeah. Just and, and, you know, um, if you are lucky enough to like, you know, have a puppy where you're like, oh, I get to work on all this stuff right now. Oh my gosh. I mean, being being uh, proactive with this stuff is hands on the best thing that you can possibly do. Nina did not come to me as a puppy. She came to me as an adult dog who already had all these issues. And so, you know, um, not that puppies cannot have body handling issues because they definitely can. Um, but when I, pre-pandemic, when I used to teach puppy classes, I would bring all of my like nail clippers and any vet stuff that I had and we would work on it in class and, you know, really trying to, work on this stuff from the get-go is super important and i think related to that too even if you don't have a puppy or if your puppy is already showing oh yeah um, What's that you? <laughs> <laughs> even if your your puppy is showing some you know body handling issues you know don't push it like absolutely just go at their pace the whole time and it'll make it so much easier for you in the long run um one thing i always try to tell my students is that going slower always goes faster um, my, um, slow down to speed up. I think I've heard that. Yeah, before. yeah, totally. Yep. Actually, uh, related to that, um, dog trainers make mistakes too. And, uh, I have a, um, five-year-old cattle dog and he's got a lot of body handling issues also. And we've been working on them and it's been really very, very hard for him. You know, it, it, he's just very sensitive generally to touch and everything. And, um, uh, many years ago now, I've been working on, on nail trims with him and his dew claws were getting really, really long. And so one day I was like, he's pretty good about this. Let's just 
let's just clip it really quick. And my wife was like, no, 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 we're not going to, that's a terrible idea, Jane. And I was like, no, just, just uh, come on, let's just do it really quick. And um, I'll put some peanut butter on his nose. He'll, he'll just, it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> I should have listened to her and uh, know better now. Um, he moved while she was going to clip his toenails and she accidentally clipped him badly. And, you know, he hid in his crate for the rest of the night. I mean, he was, he's already so sensitive and I really pushed it. Um, and now we're still trying to build back up that trust. I mean, that was a year or two ago now. And, you know, he's still like, really doesn't like having his feet touched. And you know, I really made myself, I, I really turned it into a much bigger project than it needed to be because of my own impatience. So I think, you know, again, if you're struggling with this stuff, just know that, you know, it, it is because your dog is scared and uncomfortable. And the best thing to do is just slow down and you'll end up making more progress much faster if you do that. <laughs> so learn from my mistakes. Yes. No, well, you know, <laughs> I mean, like we say as dog trainers, we, we, we often have one, you know, an issue with our dogs aren't perfect and we're, and we're oh. working with them and learning all the time. And yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, okay. So wait, let's just recap on, okay. on, I know, Hobie. hold on, buddy. Yeah. I mean, it knows it's getting close to dinner time. Um, <laughs> So your dog, you got from a rescue and came to you with lots of issues and you worked really hard and I would love you to show that video, that little video oh, yeah. you did of, yes. of him getting Dremel. I just love that stuff. It's so amazing how okay. far a dog can come. Yeah. So this little video clip, I'm going to share my screen in just a moment. Um, again, Nina could not have her feet handled. I mean, she absolutely tried to bite me more than once trying to clip her toenails. And this is a recent video of her getting her nails dremeled now. All right, I'll go ahead and hit play. Hopefully the video goes through okay. Yep, looks good. Look at that tail. <laughs> <Young boy. laughs> so she's just thrilled now. And this is her little, um, you know, the original thing here was her little play dead cue, but now it's kind of morphed into, you know, lay on your side and I'll do your toenails. Um, and it's been really helpful too, because I, I was nervous about using a Dremel because I was like, I'm putting a power tool on my dog's foot. Like, oh God, don't move. Um, but having her feet out like that was really helpful so that I can, um, you know, see her toenails better. And if she oh, gets up, I just stop. That looks, so, that looks, that's just amazing to see how far she's come though. You know, like yeah. that's just, that's so impressive and shows how much they can, you know, she's relaxed. She's wagging her tail. You know, it takes time, but you give your dog, move yeah. at their speed and look at how far yeah. you can get. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, certainly if you're out there struggling with handling, don't worry, you know, it's gonna, it can get better. <laughs> Trust me. And, and, and it, it relieves all the stress too right that yeah. stress you like you said yourself you were so worried and how are you going to do this and yeah it is so nice now to know like oh you know actually she's due for her vaccines pretty soon and i'm like well okay that's fine that's not i'm not worried you know where a couple of years ago i would have been like oh god her rabies vaccine is due in six months oh you know like where i'm already nervous about it and now it's like eh, yeah well sure you can come next week that's not a big deal you know it, it you know so definitely a lot better um you know i think too with regards to like going at their pace you know i think having some management in place too is a good idea so if your dog is really struggling with handling there are some clever ways that you can still you know live with a clean healthy dog <laughs> while you're working on this uh nina did not get a bath for the first i would say four years that i had her uh, at all. Cause I was like, there's no way that it's so low on the priority list for me. Thankfully she's, you know, part pit bull. So she doesn't have a lot of fur. That wasn't a big priority. Um, even though she loves running in the woods and getting dirty. And I was just like, okay, well, that's fine. I guess. Um, so I think, you know, thinking of some creative ways that you can keep your dog clean and looking good can be really helpful. Um, some little tips that I, I literally just thought up over the years of having Nina um, and, and my cattle dog, Indy too, you know, little things like, um, I make sure to walk them on cement. Not all the time, but regularly enough, helps with the toenails a little bit. Um, 
Uh, I taught them all to use a scratch board, which um, along with this, I have a free scratch board plan um, and a uh, little training video that goes along with it so that people at home can try it out if they want to. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun. Step by step, really easy. Um, so you get them really to scratch? Helps. Yep, yep. So they kind of do their toenails on their own. You do it on a piece of sandpaper. Um, you know, rather than a bath, like a clean towel or like a damp towel can work pretty well. Honestly, sometimes too, I'd be like, well, Nina, we're going to the lake today because you're gross. But she <laughs> likes getting in the water. And so I'm like, great, that'll that'll work for now. Um, and then um, I also like to do like, uh, since my cattle dog doesn't like having his feet touched, if his feet are muddy when he comes inside, often what I'll do nowadays is just lay a big towel out in the middle of my kitchen and then have him practice some tricks on it. Just like silly things, you know, so that he is like, if he does his little bow that usually will like move his feet on it and they get a little bit cleaner, you know, uh, sometimes I'll get him to do a roll over on it or something, get some of the mud off of them, you know, so you don't feel like, you know, there are some creative ways that you can get around some of this. And, and of course, too, I think a part of that as well is, you know, if your dog is really struggling with this stuff, talk to your vet, you know, my Nina prior to being comfortable at the vet clinic, she still needed that routine blood kit work. Um, so thankfully I found, uh, you know, my, my fear-free vet and um, we had a plan in place to sedate her prior to vet visits. It wasn't the most fun thing for me or for Nina probably, but it was so much better than, you know, struggling through a really scary vet visit and then undoing all of that hard work that I had done. Um, so, you know, talk to your vet too, if you're like, I really need some help with this. I, I really feel too for dogs that need more regular grooming, like like any coat that needs to be clipped, like especially doodles of any kind and things, you know, you've got to really keep up on that coat. And so sometimes time is not really on your side for <laughs> that because you know you can't pause their coat from growing. Uh, so you know, talking to your vet can be really helpful too to make a little extra progress on that. Yes. And protect the progress that you've made. Um, so, you know, yeah. I tend to know, I, I tend to, well, I guess I've been lucky that I haven't had dogs that needed grooming really. This is this one that, that was on me here is the longest one, but, um, yeah. I know that it's something that many people struggle with and, and, and just in being able to work ahead of time and, and help your dog through this stuff. And then you mentioned some great ideas to help managing. I love the towel, um, the <laughs> scratch board. I, I know I've heard that before, and I think that's a great idea. It's um, so fun and shockingly easy to teach. I mean, it really, because they're basically just digging, which dogs want to do anyway. And uh, it's it's really fun. And it really does a good job on their toenails, like to the point where I'm like, all right, we're done for now. Your nails are getting too short. We can't do this. You know, uh, the only bummer is it doesn't get the dew claws, but that's fine. I, I think even just having their front toenails a little bit shorter can be. Helpful. Oh, yeah. So yeah. important for them too, right? They're both. They, yeah. It's really important to to keep up with nails and things. But yeah, and and I know it's a challenge for many of us. Like it's yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, not I mean, not just you know people out there struggling. It's trainers too. We have dogs that. Uh, yes, my little Ginny there when she when we had to, I did I think I mentioned when we started doing her nails it was because um, we had to get a bunch of her teeth pulled. Oh yeah. So that so I think I missed that part of the story. So I had a friend who is a vet. Uh, um, sorry she does she does nails right she does dogs nails all the time nail trimmers and she came over and it was almost embarrassing eh? like she was my dog tried to chew her up so i can't wait one day for her to see i keep thinking i should video it how much better she is now i mean it, it just took yeah. practice and and um yeah another thing that i've done but i'd like would like the idea of doing on a towel because i've thought of this is that uh -huh. when you know how the dogs kick their back legs yeah. Right? when they after they go i so i'm quite sure at least two of mine would they're close they know what i mean when i say kick kick oh that's but, so cute so, yeah so getting them to do that on a towel i absolutely believe could happen like it just takes yeah, time that's, that's so great <laughs> i've often thought i should teach my dogs to like pick it up on cue and i just haven't ever gotten around to it but that could be extremely helpful i mean i think too i mean really um years ago i taught a, a class um, and I'm blanking on the name of it now, but the whole point of the class was teaching useful tricks. Like what are tricks that your dog can use that we can utilize, or your dog maybe knows or can learn really easily that we can utilize to make life with them easier. So 
you know, doing that bang was a big one, you know, like, yeah. oh, great. Now their feet are out on their side. Um, that's also how Nina gets a blood draw, you know, on her side like that, which Absolutely. is great. Um, teach your dog to shake. You know, if your dog already knows how to shake, throw a towel in your hand, you know, like that can help wipe off those front feet too. And they're electing to put their foot in your palm, which is really nice. You know, it may not get you all the way there, but I think that it, it really, you know, if your dog already knows stuff, utilize that, you know, I think it can really make um, some of that care stuff just a lot easier. So, yes, I, yeah. you know what, that's, I, I've actually heard that before that the shake is, it's a very good yeah. idea. I saw somebody do it and I went, oh, that was so cool. You know, I saw how yeah. much the dog was scared to give a foot, but when, but yeah, it's, it's very yeah. handy. Yeah, it is. It is. And you know, yeah, I know lots of people too, that will trim their dog's toenails like that. So like you put your foot in my hand and I flip your toenails that way. Um, so yeah, I, I think using what your dog already knows, even just starting there can be really helpful. Plus you're already starting off on, you know, like you're already making progress, you know, so you're not starting from nothing necessarily you can build on those those things that your dog already knows which is, yeah. I think which are already is. starting in a good place yeah right exactly yep yeah yeah oh, that's awesome yeah you know it, and cooperative care is becoming more and more well known and more thought about thank goodness it's, it's um just a fantastic I'm sure vets <laughs> vets and groomers that was the word I was looking for groomer groomers yes. and vets must just appreciate so much that people are starting to think yeah. about this and definitely you know, yeah. Not making I mean, it a battle yeah i mean i really feel for for groomers and vets too of just like i'm sorry that dogs want to bite you all the time that's so stressful you know and, and so i i do really appreciate that it's kind of becoming more common i think another good thing out of that too for me is just i, I think it, it's allowing people to understand more when their dog is uncomfortable you know that's becoming more normal more normal you know out in the world of like Hey, basic body language understanding is, I think, really helpful, not only for cooperative care stuff, but for everything we have to do with our dogs. You know, understanding when they're into it and when they're not can be huge. So, body language is so important. Body language and mindset, you know, are all to connection. They're all such a priority for dog owners to think about and can make such a difference yeah. in their lives. You know, the dog <laughs> wants it, the dog's waiting there. Yeah. And if sure yeah. would rather you spend some time doing, doing some conditioning, um, than tying them down or just suddenly pinning them down and doing this and not telling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Poor dog. And, and honestly, that's, that's going to slow us down. I mean, you know, I, I think, um, I, I often will say to this, especially in puppy classes, you know, because the puppies were like, oh, well, we can just distract him with some peanut butter or something, and then I can clip his toenails. You know, it's easy to hang on to him or something. And I'm like, well, that, it kind of works until it doesn't. You know, and I noticed that with Nina, especially, um, I tried for a long time just distracting her while I would give her her shot every month or something. And, and that worked until it didn't, you know, and then it really didn't work anymore. And it, it was really heartbreaking, not only because I could tell she didn't trust me, but you know, it also was like, I have made a huge project for myself because I was trying to skip ahead, you know, and just, and I, so much like with Indy's toenails too, I, I shouldn't have skipped ahead. I now have this huge project uh, that I didn't really need, <laughs> you know? So I, I think it's important to take this stuff seriously. And if your dog is uncomfortable, stop, you know, and, and certainly too, reach out, you know, to, um, there are lots of professionals who love working on this stuff. And can certainly try to make it as easy as possible for you too so yeah yes and, you know when your dog decrease that stress and just getting to know your dog better and working together you know it's it's trust in, is so important and yeah dog owners they're going to be getting better and hopefully groomers are going to be getting better dogs coming in when they yeah. start thinking about this you know i couldn't imagine having to go to the groomer and knowing what the dog what was going to happen and and being able to actually go and it, like if you were stressed about it so when you when you work on yeah. it it can take out so much stress of your whole life of your dog's life the groomer's life <laughs> yeah it's a ripple effect <laughs> it is yes yes absolutely yeah yeah the dogs appreciate it <laughs> they really do yes yeah did you 
tell me how you got into this. Oh, you said it was more from your dog, right? From from getting yeah, your dog that got a, you into it. Yeah, it really was. I mean, um, actually, many years ago, I I kind of wanted to get into social work, and then that kind of went out the window. And then um, I always have had dogs and loved them, and you know. Um, started to get more interested in how to actually train them. And then when I adopted Nina, I was like, oh man, now I guess I have to. <laughs> like this is kind of pushed me into it. But you know, I, I recognize that not everybody with a difficult dog wants to end up being a dog trainer. Um, <laughs> but I really, you know, lucked out in a lot of ways that I got this really difficult dog because it really did shape, you know, um my whole career after that, you know. So um a lot of dog trainers have started that way. Uh, definitely a lot of them. Well, I thought of something else I was going to say there for a minute to ask you about. But yeah, it is. It's such an important topic. And uh, getting to really, you know, body language and working uncomfortably with your dog and yeah. respecting your dog when it's walking away, when your dog is showing. Oh, I know I was going to ask you. So what would be, I, I want to see if you're one of your favorite or something you really like teaching maybe that you haven't mentioned for to do with to do with that like managing like if uh, tricks or something what other get the palm roll yeah over. yeah i mean quite honestly i think my go-to oh actually um you my my often go-to is to teach dogs to lay on their side because i think it's so useful for not just toenails but like i had mentioned blood draws all kinds of things um but another one i really like to teach dogs is a chin rest uh, which I think it can also be really, e yeah. So Nina knows that too, so she can put her little, um, her little chin in my hand, and and that can be really helpful too for stuff that you need to do around their face and head, which is really nice. Uh, and actually, Nina now does a little like um, muzzle station also when I do her injections every month. So I can she'll put her little head in my hand, and then um, my wife can go around and give her her shot in her, in her butt. And uh, she just stands there the whole time. Um, and so I think that chin rest though is actually really, really helpful too. Um, that's often what I'll go to if people need help with stuff like, you know, trimming around the face, cleaning ears, you know, chronic ear infections, those kinds of things. I will go for a chin rest every time, mostly because then their head's stationary and it makes it a lot easier for the person to do whatever they need to do. Um, for dogs that need their faces trimmed, too, groomers often will hang on to their chin because we don't want to, you know, we're bringing scissors near their face. We have to try to keep them as safe as possible. So I think teaching them to rest their head um, yeah. and be stationary is really nice. It's also just so cute when you're like, you know. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah, so it's just adorable. And oftentimes if I'm like in the car or something, I'll just be sitting there and, um, you know, I, I, uh, I drive a, a manual transmission so that's not that important really but often I'll just rest my hand on my stick shift and Nina will see my hand out and just be like hi do you want me to put my chin on your hand and it's just so cute you know so I I really um have found that to be really very useful too I forgot I know I've heard of that one before too and and, and I kind of done a little bit of that with one of my dogs um for it was for uh the scent class or something I think we're trying to take get the sustained but I know I've I've that's I've yeah. heard of that before, and that makes so much sense, right? If you have to, I mean, how, how does a vet feel often to grab the face and look at the teeth, right? <laughs> so getting them used to Absolutely. being handled and, and comfortable yeah. with it. Yeah. You know, and actually now too, all of my dogs know a chin rest. It's so easy to teach. You know, it's really very a pretty quick thing. And then you can add stuff to it. But I have three seniors, and you know, so even being able to like really quickly check their teeth. How are their teeth doing? You know, I, I try to keep up on that, but you know, now they're getting old. Sometimes their mouths, I'm like, oh, I think it's maybe time for a dental, you know, or something. But um, it's really nice to be able to look in there and see what's going on. And, um, you know, and my, my dog's Gomez. Yeah. Like my dog ears Gomez. are a big thing. Yeah, definitely. And my dog Gomez does get a lot of ear infections. And so being able to utilize his chin rest so I can clean his ears out, put his meds in, you know, has been extremely helpful. Um, yes. Yeah, and, that's you know, a... that's will use it too to like look in their eyes and do it for a basic exam. So why not teach it to them? You know, it uh, it just it, makes life. It, you know what? It's something to do. Like it's an actual yeah. activity you can do with your dog, and yeah, it's beneficial and can like really pay off in the long run. And 
just yeah. help your dog to live a comfortable life, not afraid to go to the vet and feel like they've been kidnapped by aliens and tied down. And <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine <laughs> you're talking yeah. about that. And I know we laugh at it, but it, it's probably a reality, you know. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I, um, I always try to emphasize this, but it really is in an animal's biology to not want to be restrained. I mean, I often think about like, what would a squirrel think if I held it down and tried to clip its tiles? It'd probably be like, I'm a goner, you know, for sure. <laughs> and, and so it makes a lot of sense that a dog doesn't want to be restrained. We don't want to be restrained, you know? So I, I think, um, I think that that really is why handling often is so hard because we're kind of working against their best interests, you know, when they're like, I don't really understand what's going on right now. I don't see the need for me to have my toenails clipped or for you to put a bow in my hair. That does not serve me at all. You know, uh, and you're trying to restrain me. Like, I don't really understand what's going on right now. So, you know, I, I think that often is why it's so challenging for many dogs. Is just, They're just protecting themselves. They're just in self-protection exactly. mode and, and, and they don't like it. Like they don't really want to do that either that way. You know? <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of, I love, I love the management uh, suggestions that you have and, and ways of, of working that I hope people will try out with their dogs. Cause I know a lot of people struggle with some of these, these issues um, and you know, cooperation is makes life so much easier <laughs> for everybody. Yes, it does. It <laughs> Thank does. you yeah. so much, yeah. Jane. And I'll stop. I'll stop recording right away. But I um, really, really appreciate yeah. your share and your and your expertise. Thank Holy. You. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.